Friday the 1st of December 2017. It's day... Merry Christmas! It's day... <laughs> One. We're very excited because what's happened this morning? Uh, the office of Rail and Road have released their passenger statistics. We, uh, we spoke to them and we were like, hey, can we come and chat to you about what you do? How you collect the statistics? And we have questions and they went, sure. It's this way. Garden behind us. It's in this. The amount of times I've walked down past this incredibly tall yeah. round building and thought, I wonder what's in this incredibly tall round building. Now we know the O R R. The O R R R. That's hard to say. The O R R R. Just can you tell us a little bit who are the Office of Rail and Road and what do you do? Uh, so we are the economic and safety regulator for Network Rail. We also have a function for monitoring Highways England, which is a very new part in terms of only being around for a couple of years, whereas the Office of Rail and Road itself has been around for an awful lot longer than that. Um, so as well as monitoring safety and all that kind of stuff on the railway, um, we also look at how Network Rail are running their business to ensure that they are doing it efficiently, effectively, and getting the best deal for their customers, so the train operators, and actually the end users of the railway as well. What is your job as senior statistics analyst? So I have two purposes within our team. We have an external facing function which is where we produce the statistics, a bit like the estimates of station usage today. Uh, as the Office of Rail and Road we are the official statistics producer for the entire rail industry. So even though for example Network Rail will publish uh, statistics about punctuality, the statistics we produce based on their data we are the official source. And so this morning as you just mentioned uh, you released the passenger statistic figures for 2016. 2017 and there's lots of buzz on Twitter on Facebook everywhere about what is the least what is the most used stations first of all everyone is really really keen to know how do you compile that information how do you is it through ticket sales is it through people swiping their tickets or passes through barriers how where does that information come from so there are a number of levels to way that the information is put together. It's all predominantly based on ticket sales, so you buy your ticket at the station, it has an origin and destination on it, that goes into the sales database and we pull an extract out of that. Uh, there's some work to be done on which routes they take, uh, passengers take, um, but that's, that's, that's most of it. So if you buy a ticket, it goes in there. Things like season tickets and other multi-use tickets, there's an assumption around how many journeys are made on that ticket. So if you buy a season ticket, there's a number of journeys allocated to that, and regardless of how many journeys you make on that ticket, that's the number that will go into our database. So if you only use a season ticket for half the year, that doesn't necessarily get reflected in the stats. For some areas, so urban areas in particular, we then get additional infill information from the transport executives or the transport authorities. So um, TfL, West Midlands, as well as the Strathclyde, so all across the country getting additional data where they are providing zonal tickets for their users and bespoke um, products for people in that area to use. So when, where, where there's a station where there aren't barriers or you sort of have to request to stop and you might buy your ticket on the train, that the ticket that you buy on the train, all that information is, is, is still gathered from, from staff's terminals. Um, is, that, is that right? Am yes, I... that's correct. Anything. So uh, a good example is using the St Ives Line branch in Cornwall. A lot of the tickets there are sold using the consoles because they just send their staff out to the stations rather than being manned. I have used that myself. I've seen it in action. <laughs> um, that all goes, it still goes into the sales ticket 
database under a slightly different um, category, but we have the information there. We've been out and counted the number of passengers on the St Ives branch line to then work out how many of those tickets have been used at each station and apportion it out accordingly. So as you will know, as all the stations, we gathered a group of people to go to Shippy Hill. We're not the only people to do this kind of thing though. The publicity around least used stations and people sort of campaigning and bringing groups to those places. How do you feel about that? Um, as a statistician, is, are those things kind of skewing the stats or is it, is it, is it great? Do you, do you like those kind of um, events? I think it's great for publicity of the railway and getting people excited about what's going on in the railway and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it does add an element of complexity to analysing stati statistics, trying to work out what's actually going on, what the underlying growth in stations is, because if you take Shippy Hill for example, going from 12 to 156 this year is an increase of 1,200%. How do you analyse that? <laughs> um, so it's, it's just been aware of the limitations of the information that we've got and this harks back to it being their estimates of station usage. It's based on ticket sales and not the absolute number of people who are travelling there. So it's just a word of caution to people who are looking at these to think about what might be affecting usage at their station. Uh, so what's been the most surprising thing in your time working on the stats and, and kind of what's been the, the most interesting peak or dip in the statistics that you've noticed? So the most interesting thing is genuinely the amount of interest that the estimates to station usage gather. Not just on release day, so the number of inquiries we get people talking about their, their individual stations, wanting to know what's going on, but even throughout the year. Um, the amount of times that we get requests for the underlying data, so the matrix of flows that sits beneath it, that's then used for uh, you know, looking at BTP information they allocate there. Um, offices out to places, um, local transport planning and all that kind of stuff, it gathers so much information, it's quite phenomenal to be working on something like that, it's really exciting. You've been on Twitter this morning answering people's questions, we've actually pulled you away from doing that, so sorry Twitter, um, you're using the hashtag station usage, what sorts of things have people been asking you this morning? All sorts of things from how the statistics are compiled, what happens when there's no barriers at stations. Oh, so what does happen then? If if there aren't any barriers at stations. So like I said, it's all based on ticket sales, so we assume that passengers are getting on and off where the origin and destination of their ticket says. Um, in that sense, if there are no barriers, the journeys are being captured. If they get off at a different station, or they haven't got a ticket, we won't know about them. Uh, what is interesting is there has been, we have seen spikes in usage at particular stations where we can say that they've introduced barriers on a particular year, um, so people feel more inclined to buy tickets. Um, but it's also bearing in mind there are so many different reasons why people could travel around on the railway without a ticket, um, so there is that legitimate ticket as travel that we do need to be aware of. I'm just gonna, oh, hello. I'm, I'm just gonna break the fourth wall. Okay. Have you ever been to Barry Links? And it, well, basically, when, when the stats came out, <laughs> Well, presumably you've known about them for like a week or a month, but you've been compiling your nice chart. Go, Isn't there a little bit of you? Or amongst the staff, your colleagues, do, why don't you all have like an office outing to Barry Links one day? Come on. <laughs> I wouldn't want to deliberately skew the statistics. <laughs> oh, good but isn't there a part of you that really wants to go? There really is. Um, we're hoping what? for... Um, an opportunity. Well then, I'll tell you what, if you don't want to skew the statistics, buy, buy a ticket to Arbroath or Carnoustie instead, but just secretly go to Barry Links. <laughs> We could get John to drive everyone. We've got a friend, yeah, John. he'll drive, he'll, he'll pick up at our bro John will do it, he'll pick up at our bro he'll, he'll do what we did, he drove us to Barry Links, we then hung around Barry Links for 20 minutes, watched a few yeah. trains go by, and then left. Yeah. Do you have an office sweepstake about what you think will be the most or least used station each year? Um, we don't, uh, partially because the top five haven't changed this year, but actually, they know that I'd always win, so <laughs> I tend not to. Becca, thank you so much. Um, sorry to have pulled you away from Twitter. Um, so we'll let you get back to that, but thank you so much for chatting to us. Very hard. It's great to meet you. That was fun. What do you, what do you think? That was fun. <laughs> we certainly are. Yeah. Uh, that was great. I did feel bad that we basically skewed their figures slightly. They were like, that's okay. <laughs> so they have to put like a little footnote in. So what we probably skewed Shuki Hill. Yeah. Hill name and because of Olga as well and her amazing campaign and also Kim Junction with Alan. Those are the three stations which probably next, next year there'll be a definite Yeah, that was us. <laughs>
just cutting back to the Covent Garden. We're heading to M&S to go and get a cup of tea and a sandwich. One of the best things they said off camera, we didn't get on camera, was that generally passenger journeys are up across the whole network by 0.4%. Yes. Generally, the trend is still going up. Did you have any final, any final thoughts though? So I'm just buying a ticket to Barry Links Golf Street. So are you actually, Vicky is on the train line app right now. You're actually buying a ticket. Barry She's buying a Barry Links ticket. Oh, we're not skiing this now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I mean. Is that it? It's only 120. Should I do it? Have you bought your ticket to Barry Links? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, sorry, Bar sorry, Aurora. Thanks, Barry.